we arrive at the third major group here of the states which is sleep this is the most mysterious one because very few people know about it or you can say hardly anybody knows about it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply attempt describing some flavors of sleep it will be difficult to gain any knowledge about these states the first state in this group is a very light kind of sleep where the body is resting but is not completely paralyzed it looks like that there is hardly any mental activity but the mind is also not resting completely the attention is still in the body or in the outside world and the sleep is interrupted very frequently you can say that it is an afflicted state of sleep and it is found in people who are insomniac and have fever or not feeling well or are not well fed they are hungry or not tired enough for sleep and when the sleep is of this kind in the night time also then the person feels tired he feels that something is not right it has a bad effect on the health of the body and the mind so from this you can uh, guess that out of all the states possible the state of sleep is most important because if this state does not happen it is going to cause death there have been some studies regarding the sleep and usually what happens is a sleep deprivation and the body does not repair itself the mental health declines it can happen within few hours of sleep deprivation after 2 days or 3 days the organism is completely dysfunctional and yes it is mysterious what happens here which is so important for life and the sleep is most complicated state to understand however those who practice awareness just like i described in the previous episodes a heightened awareness can cause a sleep that looks like a light sleep but is actually deep and relaxing this is the state of sleep where the awareness is maintained it's also known as yogic sleep the body is resting the outsiders will say that it is a normal sleep there is no dreaming or if the dreams come they are of the lucid kind and this quickly dissolve because of very high awareness there are thoughts but uh, they are nonsensical or just seem random there is imagery imagery floating by but because of the awareness it does not take on any solid forms and sometimes there is a continuous chatter or there is a sea of desires that come and go if you enter this this state you will see the causal body here very clearly for the first time all this is happening in the causal body very very strange experiences which our waking intellect cannot grasp what is going on there and they are originating in the causal body you can say from uh, your experiences of yogic sleep that uh, when all other layers are inactive the only one that is active is the causal body the causal body never sleeps metaphorically speaking all other layers can go inactive or they go to a state which is beyond our perception perception of any kind of senses but the causal body is never inactive it is already in sleep the word causal or seed body signify something like sleep since it is already asleep it cannot sleep it does produce activity of some kind but that is not the activity of the causal body it is causing some activity in the other layers and they quickly come and go so it is a very interesting uh, state to be in if you want to uh, get first hand knowledge of what sleep is other states are totally useless other sleep states are totally ineffective 
if you want direct knowledge of what the state is. And you can actually define the state here once you get a little bit of experience that it is a subdued activity of all the layers except the causal body or higher layers than causal body. Some people have this belief that sleep is complete inactivity of the body or of the other layers of the mental activity and all it ceases. But that is far from truth and it can be experienced. The body is resting. It is not really inactive. If you videotape a person sleeping, you will find that every 15 to 20 minutes, the body moves, no matter how deep the sleep is. After every few minutes, all the layers they come alive, including the body. The body makes movement, automatic movements, to keep the blood flowing and keep the body rested and cool. Nobody is doing it. There is no person there who does this. Here you can see the illusion of the person very clearly if you are in the yogic sleep. You will find that everything is happening by itself. There is no I. So the I is a product of a dreaming state. Why not waking state? If you are ignorant, the waking state is as good as the dreaming state. A person with knowledge knows that the waking state is also as illusory as the dreaming state and this identity or person or I is simply an illusion, another illusion. It is a projection. So there are cycles in the sleep state which can be seen in the yogic kind of sleep. The experiences they come and go and the body is not completely inactive. The mind is not completely dead. There is an experience. However, upon waking up, everything is forgotten about the sleep. So this kind of sleep will be called a deep sleep where there is no memory of any experience at all. It is opposite of the yogic sleep. And the deep sleep is a healthy kind of sleep. Although the yogic sleep also has no bad effects on health whatsoever. It is a healthy kind of sleep. Only that some people may not like it for long because it leaves us with uh, a feeling that I did not sleep completely. This is my own experience. That If it starts happening every night, one day you get tired of it and you want to go to deep sleep state. It is not a physiological effect. It is simply a psychological effect because we are so habitual of deep sleep state. So anyhow, it is, the deep sleep is very important for a healthy life. What happens in the deep sleep state? Exactly that which happens in the yogic sleep state. Nothing changes except there is no awareness. And because there is no awareness there, there is no memory of what happened. How is it even possible that memory does not function in a deep sleep? Well, that is not true. It functions. But there is nothing to record there. <laughs> there is a, a lot of silence, that's all. A lot of noise of other layers which are doing only maintenance kind of activity. They are not producing a meaningful experience. Remember that all the experience is created by these layers in the memory. There is no other experience. So nothing is really recorded in the waking state memory, which I sometimes call as the local memory. Nothing gets there. It is just noise, meaningless activity or just routine maintenance activity. The ego is not interested in that. The person is not interested in that and it is completely useless for survival. So when the sleep state is over, well, it looks like nothing happened. And so some people who have never experienced any kind of awareness in their sleeps think that it is an unconscious state. And they will even declare that I was unconscious. It is simply ignorance. It is simply inability to remember what happens in the sleep. The sleep is a very active state actually. But not from the point of view of the person. Not from the point of view of the waking state. From the point of view of the waking state or dreaming state. It reduces to meaningless activity which looks like no activity when we try to access the memory of it. 
it is possible to turn on your awareness in the deep sleep just like it is possible to turn on the awareness in the dreaming and it is a matter of practice when you when you have 100% awareness in the waking and when you get 100% awareness in the dreaming it is very very natural that your deep sleep will be in 100% awareness or if not let us say 20% or 50% awareness and uh, that will give you enough experience a taste of what is sleep an ignorant person does not know anything about sleep and not only that i have seen that even the educated people and people who study these states they have no clue about what sleep is because they try to study it from an objective point of view which is stupidity sleep is a subjective experience just like any other experience there are no objective experiences if you don't study it from a subjective point of view you will get zero knowledge or ridiculous mumbo jumbo which you call science the only way to obtain any kind of scientific knowledge about sleep is to experience it which is possible by employing various techniques and doing the experiments yourself don't use a guinea pig to know what my sleep looks like this is not wise through that practices through the awareness you will enter the yogic sleep and you can experiment away as much as you desire you will find that it is very very mysterious and it is full of activity that should come as a surprise and shock to many people now this is not the only state which can be clubbed under sleep there are more mysterious states of sleep for example anesthesia even those who enter a yogic sleep will not be able to describe anesthesia because the drug the anesthetic drugs they wipe out the yogic sleep also they wipe out the awareness also it is possible that there will be a, an experience in the state of anesthesia but usually there is no memory of it only vaguely you remember that i was talking something gibberish or i was thinking something but it makes no sense anesthesia is complete wiping out of the memory of many layers it goes very deep you can say that here no trick no practice is going to work if you want to know the state of anesthesia nothing is going to work here however and this can be again a surprise that the anesthesia can trigger spontaneous projections a near death experience like experiences can happen which happen in complete awareness when the body is under the influence of anesthesia now you cannot call it anesthesia because the pain can be experienced or there is some experience here so you can say that it is a failed anesthesia now those who are in this field they will be able to tell more about it i don't have a lot of experience and you will be forced to say that there is an absence of experience in anesthesia you won't be able to bring an evidence of any kind you can bring a lot of evidence regarding deep sleep a yogic sleep and light sleep etc but nothing can be said about anesthesia this is my opinion only probably many people have experimented with with anesthesia or it happened accidentally to them and they had some experience or something so probably they will be they are best equipped to explain this state i can surely say that this is a sleep state this is some kind of sleep which can be artificially induced there are some more states like uh, fainting which is a temporary loss of activity and it can happen because of many reasons bad health diseases trauma etc and you you must have guessed by now that this is a afflicted state of sleep here the attention is withdrawn from the waking state as a sort of defense mechanism the activity is flash frozen here to prevent further damage or it can be simply loss of blood or loss of nutrients in the blood it, they can cause fainting so what is the experience of fainting like it is like deep sleep mostly with a lot of confusion and delusion there are more afflicted states of sleep which i am not going to describe you will find a lot of literature there 
There are sleep disorders. For example, a person can fall asleep anytime, anywhere while standing, walking or driving. The activity ceases without warning. There are afflictions like sleep walking, sleep talking and many more. Which gives us a hint that sleep is not a loss of consciousness. <laughs> it is way more complicated than these simple minded beliefs. It has varying amount of activity and the activity is mostly undesirable. There is an affliction which is highly interesting really and can be clubbed under sleep state and it is coma. Now it is a afflicted state as you have guessed it. However, there can be an activity which is healthy like normal activity in other layers. The characteristic of coma is that uh, the lower layers are completely inactive, the body. Or you can say they are not completely inactive but barely functioning. Like the body is incapable of moving but uh, its metabolism is totally healthy. The heart beats and the digestion works and the breath continues. The temperature is regulated and so on. Only the movement is lost. So you can say that it is a disorder of the nervous system somewhere. The motor areas in the brain, the went faulty. And that does not mean that all other layers have gone faulty. No, there is an internal life there which is still happening. And this is a very unfortunate and terrifying state to be in. From the outside, it looks like that the person is sleeping. But life is happening there without movement. And that and that person is going to enter all the other states just like any other healthy person. The sleep happens in coma. The dreaming happens in coma and the waking also happens in coma. Just that the body is almost 90% dysfunctional. It is not death. And it is also not near death. It is a very strange situation, surely. There are some interesting differences between uh, coma, anesthesia and deep sleep. The deep sleep state is entered naturally. The cycle happens naturally. Anesthesia is uh, artificial. The person comes out of deep sleep naturally, wakes up naturally. But in anesthesia, it is not possible to wake up the person. When the drug is uh, ejected out of the body by the cleaning processes in the body, only after that, the person can wake up from anesthesia. In coma, there is no waking up. Although the body is functioning, although all the layers are functioning, but there is no waking up. If the person heals, if the nervous system heals, there can be a partial recovery or, or there can be a full recovery and it can take a long time. So another interesting state of sleep is death. And now this can be the biggest shock. Isn't death complete destruction? And we are going to talk about death in a greater detail. But uh, as soon as you look at the layered structure, you will see that death is simply a destruction of the lower layers. It is not a destruction of the whole structure. The whole structure, being non-physical, cannot be destroyed. In the higher layers, they are non-mental also and are completely indestructible. Yes, they do change. But uh, the memory is never destroyed. The whole manifested existence is nothing but a memory. It never goes away. It is timeless. It is non-local. There is nothing there but a change of possibilities. That which is almost nothing cannot become nothing. It remains. It is a matter of accessing them. It is a matter of how the lower structures express the higher ones. So the physical body is a lower structure that is simply expressing that which is in the higher layers of the memory. Since it is gross, since it is rule bound, it is bound to be destroyed. And the destruction happens very quickly and in cycles. The birth and death, they happen in cycles just like any other cycle in the memory. It is a routine to assume physical bodies and then the physical bodies rot away, they age and then they are destroyed. What happens when the physical body is destroyed? The lower layers, they are gone. 
they get recycled into the environment in which they appear for example the physical body gets recycled in the physical world which is the corresponding area in the universal memory the layers such as the ego etc they dissipate in their own memory spaces what is uh, almost sure is that the causal body never goes away the middle layers also can withdraw for a while although they are also not destroyed especially for a evolved entity they hold on to the higher layers and they project into other areas in the universal memory while a suitable physical body is being prepared and sometimes this may not happen and the whole of the activity ceases and even the structures are destroyed except of the causal body and above they cannot be destroyed they, it can only change just like we saw in the previous episodes the more subtle the layer is the longer it lasts although it will have a life you can call it a half life because it simply changes into something we may not recognize it as a individualized causal body after a while but it has become something and just like we saw in the case of yogic sleep the causal body is in a state of sleep it occasionally wakes up and forms different structures below it and produces an experience all these experiences are a variation of the sleep think about it the sleep is the basic state the sleep is the most fundamental state of any structure in the memory and its variations the departures from sleep they are dreaming states among them is a state of birth being born in a rule bound area in the universal memory which is simply a connection of the causal body to these lower structures that produces another dream state which we call as the waking state my life and we are so much in love with it <laughs> it is only a state and the death is simply an end of a cycle cyclic states people are so terrified of it why because they do not know anything about these states they do not know anything about the layers they do not know these memory structures and what they are and they do not know their real nature what do they know they know only the waking state and one thing and only one thing that i am this body and the thing that the body needs to do whatever it does and it needs to do it very quickly i want this i want that this is my life this is me you can see complete darkness here you can see that they have only a pin hole to look through that is all their experiences a few moments of the waking state this is how the ignorant person is born lives and then dies comes from the sleep goes to the sleep the great sleep the whole universal memory is actually sleeping you remember the picture of the vishnu he is shown sleeping on a giant snake this knowledge is not new this knowledge is very very ancient how do we come to know about these things how can one explore death without dying because dying is a big no no in our current societies so we cannot recommend that that method of experimentation but there are other ways just like you can experience sleep using techniques and meditation and awareness you can experience death without dying while having a healthy body so we are going to discuss all those methods and there are more elegant methods to die compared to the usual kicking screaming fearful stupid way people die these days they die of diseases they die of accidents they die in criminal activities like wars we cannot call it a human death the way people die these days it happens in complete darkness the death is in darkness the sleep is in darkness the dreams are in darkness and the waking state is in darkness amazing we live in amazing times really They, these are dark times if you know even 1% of what i'm telling you through your direct experience you are extremely lucky now there remains only one more state in the sleep category which i should mention and that is the dissolved state and it is the same dissolved state 
which I mentioned in uh, waking category or dreaming category. This is a special kind of deep sleep or you can say special kind of yogic sleep also. The Maha Samadhi state where the causal body has matured to a state. It has evolved so much that uh, it sees the whole cyclic adventures of taking births and deaths and and dreaming and wandering in in the infinite ex- expense of universal memory as childish and then withdraws from all this drama it says i don't want any more illusion now and withdraws into its own being which is the experiencer which is the existence itself in complete awareness and the whole structure melts into this infinite ocean of universal memory we cannot say what happens to it metaphorically you can say its particles are now dispersed in the whole universal memory it is nowhere but it is everywhere and so the word dissolved is a very beautiful word to describe this state and yes it is a sleep and at least i won't be able to tell you more than this because even if you get an experience of it you won't be able to come back here to tell everybody about how great this state is so it's full of speculation and inferences theories almost like death nobody comes back from death to tell you how the death was that is why i said the sleep states are most mysterious they are devoid of knowledge knowledge is possible in very very specialized states and most of the existence is knowledge less nothing knows anything it all happens and it all dissolves there are a few sparks here and there of knowledge and they also do not last this whole thing is truly unknowable just like we concluded in the parts about knowledge the whole existence is essentially unknowable and the state of sleep just gives us a tiny bit of taste of what everything is because of the connotations of the word sleep its association with uh, inactivity and consciousness uselessness it has no utility at all and so on afflictions anesthesia coma death all negative associations nobody is interested in studying what sleep is paradoxically it is the only state the existence is naturally you can see how retarded human view points are can you see the paradox that which you consider as the most aware and useful state which is the waking state is actually the farthest away from reality and that which you consider as totally useless waste of time is a state that is most mysterious and most true in a relative way and this is mind blowing for an average seeker now you will be interested in knowing what sleep is mm-hmm.